Hi, it's Holly from the Science Hive. Today I'm bringing you a video for the IGCSE biology specification on the topic of cell structure, including cellular organelles and their functions. So let's start by talking about what a cell is. Now, a cell is the smallest functional unit of an organism. They're sometimes referred to as the basic building blocks of life. They were discovered by a scientist called Robert Hooke, and you may already know him from Hooke's Law in physics. And he was looking at a plant under the microscope. And to him, the individual cells that he, were look he was looking at looked a lot like the tiny rooms that monks lived in, which were called cells. It's the same thing as a like, prison cell. Um, so he saw these tiny little things under the microscope, and he coined the word cell for what he was looking at. Now, a lot of cells working together to carry out the same function is called a tissue. And a group of tissues working together is called an organ. Here I've drawn the example of the liver, um, but other organs include the heart, the lungs, the brain. And if we're th talking about plants, we could talk about the leaf, the leaves are organs, and the roots. A group of organs working together is called an organ system. So the liver is part of the digestive system, but other organ systems you could talk about are the respiratory system or the circulatory system. So now let's take a look at the different parts of the animal cell or a plant cell. So there's four, four organelles that are shared between each, and then plant cells have an extra three on top of that. Now have a go at pausing the video and matching up the correct organelle with each label. Okay, so I'll go through some of the answers. And I'll start off with the ones that are shared between the animal cell and the plant cell. So the first one I'll start off with is the cell membrane. So that's right on the outside of the animal cell and just beneath just beneath the cell wall of a plant cell so it's this thick one here if we're looking at a plant cell it's important for controlling what goes into and out of the cell okay the nucleus this big blue ball is here it contains the dna and it controls the cell's activities so it's basically the boss of the cell it tells it what to do Okay, these little pink organelles are called mitochondria. They're the site of respiration, which is the reaction that produces energy. And the liquid filling in that fills up the whole cell is called the cytoplasm. And it's important because that's where cell reactions take place. Now the three extra organelles that are found in plant cells, I've already referred to the cell wall. That's right on the outside next to the cell membrane. It's important for giving the cell structure and support. These green organelles are called chloroplasts. That's where photosynthesis takes place. And right in the middle we have this vacuole, which stores cell sap and keeps the cell turgid. So hopefully you got all of those right. If not, rewind and try again now that I've gone through them. Also, if you go to our website, into the biology page, there's a cell labelling activity that you can print off and add to your revision notes. Okay, and if you're studying the double award, you can stop the video here. Everything else that I'm going to talk about in the remainder of the video only applies to students studying the triple award specification. Okay, so not all cells look the same. In fact, they can look really different to one another. Here I've drawn some examples of specialised cells which are all adapted for their functions. Okay, here we have a neuron or a brain cell and they're really thin so loads can be packed into our brains. And actually we have about 86 billion neurons in our brain and to put that into perspective, there are about 100 billion stars in our galaxy. So you can see how, what an incredible number that is. Now they have these little endings called dendrites. Um, and 
those allow the neuron to form lots of different connections with other brain cells. Okay, egg cells have loads of space for energy storage and they're packed full of mitochondria to provide the energy needed to divide into an embryo. Adipocytes or fat cells have less cytoplasm than normal cells and that allows more room for them to store fats. This epithelial cell, and these are cells that are found on the surface of the trachea or the windpipe, they have cilia on their surface, these little finger-like projections, and that enables them to move mucus, which contains bacteria and any microorganisms that have got into our windpipe. And the, the cilia waft the mucus up our throat and prevent us from becoming ill. Okay, and the smooth muscle cell is long and thin, so it can pack tightly with other muscle cells, and that allows them to work together to carry out muscle contraction. These cells are also packed full of mitochondria, which means they can generate loads of energy needed for that muscle contraction. Okay, so these aren't the only specialised cells. Um, if you think of the shape of red blood cells, root hair cells and sperm cells, you can see that pretty much every cell has its own unique shape and adaptations to help it carry out its function. Okay, however, these cells didn't always look so different. At the start of their lives, um, they began as stem cells, which all pretty much looked the same. Um, and when we're in embryo, we contain loads of stem cells, which eventually became all the different cells of our body. The process of a stem cell turning into a specialised cell is called cell differentiation. And if you find this difficult to remember, think of how differentiation contains the word different in it. So differentiation basically causes cells to become different from one another. So as I said, embryos contain loads of stem cells, but you can still find them in adults, but in this case they're restricted to the bone marrow. Stem cells play a really important part in medicine for researching diseases and developing treatments. It's important to remember that there are two sources of getting stem cells. So we can get them from embryos, and these are called embryonic stem cells. Um, and as you can imagine, there's a whole range of ethical issues associated with the use of embryonic stem cells. However, there's another way that scientists can manufacture stem cells, and that's by getting them from adult cells. So here I've just done a summary of what's happening. Stem cells, as we grow from an embryo into an adult, those stem cells differentiate into specialised cells. But what scientists have done is they've basically come up with a method of converting specialised cells into stem cells which involves a very complicated method of tricking the cells to undergo the reverse process of differentiation and they'll do that in a petri dish in the lab. It takes months of lab work but it avoids all the ethical issues of using embryonic, embryonic cells. So today both types of cells are used for research and medicine and medicinal purposes, but more and more often, these types of cells that don't involve embryonic stem cells are being used. Okay, so you may get a question in your exam asking to evaluate the use of stem cells in medicine. And here I've listed a few advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are that it can be used to cure disease. For example, bone marrow transplants can be used to cure diseases such as leukemia. And stem cells can replace faulty or damaged cells in patients. So an example of this might be um, replacing the insulin producing cells in people with diabetes. Okay, the risks of using stem cells are that they may be contaminated with a virus which could be passed on to the patient, making them more ill. And like I said, if we're talking about using stem cells from embryos, if we're using embryonic stem cells, then there's ethical issues associated with that. Many people believe that human embryos shouldn't be used since each one has the potential to form a human life. Okay, that's everything. I hope you found this video useful. 
please subscribe and comment below with any feedback and suggestions on what you'd like to see in the future. And for more information about the stem cell structure and other GCSE science topics, visit us online at www.thesciencehive.co.uk where we have explanations for the whole course, downloadable revision worksheets, fun facts and um, the possibility to book online tuition. We also post science cartoons and revision help on Instagram, so follow us on there so that you can revise as you scroll. Thanks for watching, see you next time.